Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video. Today we're going to talk about the Gumball Max trick. If you haven't already, I strongly recommend that you watch one of my previous videos about the reparameterization trick because it serves as a good background for this video. Anyway, we will uh, cover some of it as a recap, I guess, uh, because while there are they are different tricks and they solve different problems, the solution for both tricks uh, relies on the same concept. Then we'll continue talking about the Gumball Max trick. We'll talk about what exactly it is and how we use it. We'll talk about the mathematical definitions that revolve around it. And then we'll see sort of a visualization of the trick. Okay, let's start with the recap of the reparameterization trick. So we talked about a specific model called a variational autoencoder. This model receives some input, say an image, then the encoder part encodes uh, the input to a lower dimension, usually denoted as Z. And then we want to, I guess, reconstruct another image from the same distribution. So to do that, we sample Z from a Gaussian distribution, which is, of course, conditioned by the input. And so, well, I guess one of the key differences between the two tricks is that here, the Gaussian distribution is continuous, whereas uh, for the Gumball Max trick, we want uh, to sample from a discrete distribution. Let's continue talking about the reparameterization tricks just for a little bit. Uh, if you recall, again, the problem or the main problem that we had uh, is that we cannot, we cannot get a good estimate of the derivative and therefore backpropagate and really train our model when we use sampling or what's called a random node or a sampling node. And the solution is, of course, the trick itself, the reparameterization repar trick. The visualization we had in the previous video was that well, again, Z is a sampling node. If we want to sample from it, uh, uh, compute something, and then backpropagate, then this poses a problem. The solution is to kind of split the random sampling process and the parameters of the distribution, in this case, the mean and the standard deviation. And so this part doesn't really take part in the backpropagation, which solves the problem. What we do here is we sample epsilon from a known distribution. It's a, it's a, ra it's a normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one. And then we plug it into a function called G, which is parameterized by mu and sigma, which are both learnable parameters, and they are learned through the backpropagation. We compute Z, and then we can continue on to do anything we want with our model. So again, the solution to both tricks relies on this concept, and this is why I wanted the recap. Now let's talk about the Gumbel Max trick itself. Let's understand what, what it is, I guess. Suppose we have a model, and this specific model receives an image as an input, but the input is a, a dice. Okay, there's some computation in the network in our forward call and say in one part of the forward call, uh, call, we want to sample from a categorical distribution and then generate something like, I don't know, maybe a caption of the image. And so part of the caption of the image has to tell what the number is. And we want to, again, sample, but sampling is problematic. We saw that the reparameterization trick and specifically sampling from a categorical distribution is also problematic because how do we do that? I mean, we do know that when we train neural networks, sometimes we can output probabilities and then we can train the model with cross entropy loss. But this is not the case because in this training process, we do not give the model uh, the true values of the of the image. We can give it captions, but as part of the uh, forward uh, uh, call, we do want to sample from this distribution. We would like, in an optimistic uh, case, for the input to generate probabilities 
such that all of these will be zero and this will be one. And the Gumbel Max trick helps us achieve this kind of behavior. So formally uh, kind of highlighting the problem, the problem, not problems, is that, well, we cannot get a good estimate of the derivative through this argmax function. This is what I guess we would have wanted to do, uh, but it's problematic to, again, to calculate the derivative. And the solution is the Gumbel Max trick. So now we'll have to understand exactly what this trick is. Why use the Gumbel distribution and how use, how do we use it? So I guess this is a very general answer to why we use this specific distribution, but the Gumbel distribution is used to model extreme events. So for example, it could be used to model extreme weather events. And in ancient times, it was used to model when say the Nile River would have been flooded. How exactly do we use it? Uh, we add the gumbo noise. We add gumbo noise. So uh, say we are training our model and there are initial probabilities for these uh, categorical distributions. And for each one of the categories, we add this gumbo noise because it helps break ties with very similar uh, categories. It kind of helps the model in that case in the sense of training. After we do that, after we plug in the gumbo noise, we use softmax. We'll see that in the following slides instead of argmax to kind of, well, smooth everything because again, the calculating the derivative through argmax is very problematic. Let's talk about the mathematical aspect of the gumbo max trick. So to sample from the gumbo distribution, for each category i, we sample gumbo noise and then add it to the probability. And gumbo distribution is a distribution that is parameterized by mu and beta, where mu is the location of the distribution and beta is the scale. And again, we, we don't want to find the parameters beta and uh, mu. We start with a known distribution where mu is equal to zero and beta is equal to one. And that's and it's, the two tricks are different because we use an, the, the known distribution here to help with training uh, in, a, in a different sense than, than finding the parameters of Gaussian distribution. And to get this GI, well, it's kind of different from normal distribution where we already have given functions. And all we have to do is call the functions to draw from that distribution. It's kind of different for the Gumbel distribution. So we do need to understand at least how to write the code to draw from this uh, distribution. Uh, we start by sampling from a uniform distribution, which is evenly all the numbers between zero and one. We'll denote that as UI. And then we'll plug it into this equation, minus log of UI and minus log of that to get the gumbo noise for a categorical uh, value. And we repeat this process for each one of the categories uh, and, and add the gumbo noise to each one of the probabilities that our model already generated. Let's try to bring everything together through visualization. So our model again, for this example, generated three different probabilities, pi one, pi two, and pi three. And we want at the end, we want this one hot vector that represents that, uh, well, it, the model chose this uh, sample, the, the, the second one, pi two, as the highest probability. Um, so, what we do is we take each one of the log probabilities, we add that with the gumbo noise, and then we get the argmax value. And from that argmax value, we can generate the one hat vector. This is what, again, we would want to do, but argmax poses a problem because, again, uh, calculating the derivative is problematic. So what we do is we replace it with softmax, which is a smooth A approximation of the argmax. It generates something different, not a one hat vector, but the uh, numbers that represents the probabilities after they have been injected with the gumbo noise. 
and this enables the training of our model. Uh, there's just one part that is still missing to understand the whole Gombert trick. First, um, well, to calculate the softmax over all the sample, we use this um, equation, yi is equal to the upper part and the well, sum, the sigma of all the lower parts, which is all of the samples. Um, and well, we sum everything. It's exponent to this uh, part that we already know, divided by tau, which is the temperature of the softmax. And I guess this is the final part that we have to understand into how to use the Gumbel max trick. So what is this temperature value? The temperature value is how our distribution that the softmax outputs resembles a categorical distribution or a continuous distribution. Small values, which are closer to zeros, are um, very close to one hot, meaning it really represents a categorical distribution. And naturally, uh, larger values, the samples are smooth, and it's it, it's more like a continuous distribution. And obviously, this part is hard to train because we already know that it's almost impossible to train with argmax because of the derivative. The gradients is very noisy, and well, it's almost impossible to train. So what we do is it's called temperature annealing. What we do is we start with large values, and throughout the model training, we gradually decrease it and decrease it and decrease it until it reaches almost the one hot a, well, a representation. And I guess this is the final form of the visualization. For the Gumball Max trick, if we want to sample from a categorical distribution in a lower dimensional space, we start with the well, model's initial probabilities, we log them, and then add gumball noise. After we've added gumball noise, we inject that into the softmax function, parameterized by tau, and then that outputs the representation that should approximate, at the end of the training process, a one-hot vector. Of course, if we do this, this enables us to backpropagate and to learn whatever the model needs to learn, and there's no problem with estimating the derivative. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful in any way, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Thank you again.